Hello, welcome to the Midday Cooking Show. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ian. And boy, do we have a show for you. And before we forget, Merry Christmas. Jump right in, shall we? To kick things off, we have the four most interesting news stories that we could find. In our first story, a petition to ban Donald Trump from the UK has reached over 300,000 signatures. Any petition that gets over 100,000 signatures is considered by Parliament's petition committee. This means that the Parliament will seriously debate whether or not to ban Donald Trump from the entire UK. In our second story, Star Wars The Force Awakens broke ticket records before it was even released. It earned over $6.5 million, shattering the previous record holders, The Dark Knight Rises, Avengers, and Hunger Games Catching Fire, which all had around $1 million in pre-sale tickets. For our next story, MIT has developed a smart bandage, which, when wrapped around an injury, detects infection and changes temperature levels. It then sends medicine to the affected area when it senses either one of those. It is still in the developmental stage and won't be released to the public for quite some time. And for our final story, NASA has decided to abandon their post on the International Space Station. This is due to the fact that they wish to redirect their efforts away from the ISS and more towards traveling to Mars and the Moon. They will continue to stay on the ISS until 2024. Very cool. Next up, the Midday Cooking Show with Aspen. My name is Aspen Bowden and I'm here today with the Midday Cooking Show. Um, we chose that we're going to do gingerbread s'mores because Christmas is right around the corner and we're going to show a clip of how to make them. So the ingredients that you need are 3 fourths cup of butter, 2 large eggs, um, you're going to need a teaspoon of ground cloves, a teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon of ground sugar half a cup of brown sugar, and three cups of flour. Then you're gonna get two thirds cup of molasses, a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of cornstarch. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the butter in a bowl and you're gonna mix it until it's completely creamy, it's nice and smooth, then you're gonna add the brown sugar and mix that thoroughly. Then afterwards you're going to add the eggs and molasses and this concludes your section of the wet ingredients and the rest are your dry, which you're gonna mix in a separate bowl. So these include flour, sugar, um, you have your baking soda, your cornstarch, and you have uh, cloves, ginger, salt, and things like that. Then you're gonna mix it all together. Um, then you're gonna combine the dry ingredients in the bowl with the wet ingredients and make sure that that's mixed thoroughly so that it will cook properly. And then if you have it too runny of a dough, kind of like this one, um, you just add a cup of flour at a time until it's completely thick and you mix. And then you're going to put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour. 
um, so that it can set and cool and it'll cook right. Um, so afterwards, you roll it out on a clean counter and you spray it with butter spray so that it's not too sticky or you can put it on parchment paper. Firmly press your cookie cutter into the dough and peel away the excess gingerbread and place it back into your bowl of dough so that you can reuse it later. Um, and this makes it so that you don't waste a lot of gingerbread and it works out really nicely and you can get a lot more cookies doing it this way. And you're going to place it evenly on a baking pan and make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees and make sure that your cookies don't touch each other otherwise they might stick. Um, put it in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes and fun fact it's not actually considered gingerbread unless it's sweetened with honey or molasses and the main taste is ginger. So once they're done, you're going to place them on the counter to slightly cool and turn them all over so that when you like put them together, they can form sandwiches and you want to match cookies that are about the same thickness. Um, you're going to put marshmallow cream on one side and then you're going to put chocolate spread on the other side. And since I'm a strong believer that you can never go wrong with Nutella, that's what I used. And now you can place your two sides together after it's all spread on the cookies. Um, and then you're ready to decorate your gingerbread s'mores. And they look super cute and yummy. So now that you know how to make them, these are what ours look like. Um, we made them in the shape of trees and we already started decorating them a little bit. Um, they're super cute, easy to make, and fun to decorate. Will gingerbread s'mores work with any shape? Because I noticed that ours, they're shaped like these trees. And the pictures behind us, they have them shaped like houses? Yeah, um, so the s'mores will work with any shape or cutout that you have so long as they can form a sandwich and they're placed. And I have to ask, what made you decide to do s'mores in the shape of trees? Okay, so, well one, I figured in lieu of the holidays, a Christmas tree would be super cute. And two, they're simple and just flat out adorable and can work great as a holiday treat for your family, friends, and neighbors. What exactly are we decorating with here? So what we have is two bags of frosting that you can buy at any small grocery store and we have several sets of assorted sprinkles and sizes. Um, and if you want to go an extra step towards homemade s'mores, you can mix egg whites and powdered sugar to make your own frosting and some might say that it tastes better. These gingerbread s'mores really do seem like to be a perfect holiday treat. And I'm pretty proud that I am a perfect <laughs> smiley face decorator. <laughs> I'm pretty proud with mine how, how mine turned out. It's a little more like a Christmas tree. So thanks for having me today, Ethan. My pleasure. Now we're going to take it to the teacher interview after a quick commercial. First off, here at Wasatch, we expect to excel. Our sportsmanship is phenomenal. Players are even more phenomenal. Am I right? You give out prizes every week. At the end of the year, you give out this fat puppy. So it would be cool to care. Here at Wasatch, we're all good looking. Right, movie? That's how awesome Wasatch is. Hello, I'm Kelvin Geis, and I'm here with Theron Gustafsson. You work in Digital Wasp, is that correct? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, when you work in Digital Wasp, what are some of the most common complaints or issues that students will have? Uh, well, a couple of them I get are that First of all, it's uh, always important that your computer's charged. Um, it's important to have it plugged in and ready to go um, all the time. Every time everybody, the students think that it's being charged, it's not really being charged at all. So uh, it's always important to make sure it's being charged. Um, also making sure that um, you're going to the right sites that are necessarily for the, the, the sites that you need to be on. I notice a lot of kids in class asking for charging cables because they don't have one. Yeah, it's <laughs> a big one. Um, what would you say is charging, what was like the most annoying problem that it would have? Um, well, a lot of them are just saying that it's charged. When it's not, make sure everything's plugged in and then also make sure you're hitting the power button, power's on. Uh, you're a graduate of Wasatch High, is that correct? Yeah, I graduated in 08. 08. So, have was that before? Did you go to this high school or only? I did not. I went to the old high school a long time ago. So, how would you feel that, like, student life or just high school in general has changed over the years since you were a student and now? Uh, life has changed a lot. I mean, we don't have computers. We are all writing on papers and having books. So, the technology you guys have is a big change and a big difference from what I had in high school. Mm -hmm. um, 
you are a swim coach at Wasatch, right? I am. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so you swam in high school as well. So that is that kind of the reason why? What really yep. So I, I swam my sophomore, junior, senior year. I wasn't here my freshman year, so I swam those three years. Um, then after that, I helped uh, the new head coach now, named Steve Marsing. He came in, so I was his assistant coach, and then I just got into swimming coaching ever since then, so I've been coaching now for five years. That's really interesting. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, for thank you, Calvin. Wow, who knew that Theron could be a swim coach? I mean, he's a tech guy. <laughs> yeah, seriously, and a huge thanks to Theron Gustafsson for coming out and being interviewed today. Coming up next, the most popular game show around, Challenger. show are that we have three different challenges for our contestants one the first challenge is that the first challenge is the habanero pepper the contestants must put a habanero pepper in their mouth chew it up and then spit it out and they will have and then they must endure the pain for a minute okay the second challenge is the saltine cracker challenge the contestants have to put the saltine crackers in their mouth well, they have to eat five saltine crackers in one minute. And then the third challenge is the cookie challenge. We have some really burnt cookies here, and the contestants have to put the cookies in their mouth. They have to eat two cookies in the span of one minute. So, uh, the timer starts uh, when... Um, and then uh, another rule is that they cannot drink any milk. So if they spit out any of the food and they can't finish the challenge, or if they drink any of the milk presented before them, they lose that one challenge. Uh, they get rewarded with uh, three. If they win the first challenge, they get three cool to care cards. If they win the second challenge, they get six. And if they win the third challenge, they get 12. So there's lots of stakes here. So let's get started. Uh, we don't really have a timer <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. now, but let's get started with the first challenge, the habanero challenge. Ready, Cal? Let's see, Cal. Yep. So, um, let's get a 10 second timer up. So they have to put them in their mouth, chew them for 10 seconds, and spit them out, and then they have to endure the pain for about one minute. Okay. Three, two, one, go. We should put it back out in five seconds. Two, one, spit them out. <coughs> and now, What's if you drink bowl? any of the milk, you lose that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling it now. Oh. <laughs> so, how are you feeling? Quite awful, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. But if you make it through this challenge, then you get three cool to care. <laughs> Can we just hurry it up and go to the next one? So let me get the timer up on here. Hey Taylor, you have about 20 seconds to go. Remember when we were friends? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a vast memory, distant memory. Okay, we go now. Okay. Five, about five more seconds to go. Five, 
four, three, two, one. First challenge completed. Now start eating the saltine crackers. You have to eat five in one minute. We have the timer right here. So, <laughs> this is just awful. <laughs> they also have to endure the pain of the habanero uh, peppers that they just ate. Mm. <laughs> How does it taste? <laughs> so here's a little more fact. <laughs> crackers, wow. saltine crackers, have holes in them for a reason. Without the holes, the crackers would rise during baking, and then they would just be like normal biscuits. So the holes make it make it so that the heat can escape through them. So. You guys have about 10 seconds left. Start munching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Cookies. You have to eat. Five, you have to eat two cookies in one minute. Okay, go. So get her going. <laughs> <laughs> this is a straight rock. So the instructions for the cookies told That's us what? to bake them for about six minutes. We accidentally put them in for 60 minutes, but. We caught it after 30 minutes of baking, so we're good. So, how are you guys feeling so far? Are you good? I'm not in the mood to speak right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> this tastes awful. <laughs> <laughs> You have about third, 30 seconds left. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, are you guys done with your cookies? Mm -hmm. Sadly, yes. <laughs> okay, so here's your rewards. It looks like you both got through all the challenges in just in time. Can I so, drink milk now? What? Yeah, you can drink the milk now. <laughs> Looks like you both got through it just enough time. So here are your winnings. You may cash them in whenever you want. Tons of cool to care cards for everyone. So thank you for coming to our game show. Uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of fun so far. Oh and goodbye. Hey, welcome to class. Uh, before I take roll, I want to remind you guys, you can wear your t-shirts. For college day, I mean, just wear your t-shirt and probably get a dollar if Mr. Doll comes and finds you. Holy smokes, that's a good looking BYU uh, Idaho shirt. There's your, good job. Cool to care card, cash, I love it. All right, here we have a uh, Jake Chipman, a world champion uh, flow rider. So uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, what is flow riding for those that don't know about it? So flow rider was an attempt to create surfing for people that didn't have an ocean, but landlocked. Up, yeah, landlocked people. But they ended up creating like a new sport instead of surfing, m most similar to like skateboarding but on water. All right, cool. So how did you get into flow riding? Like what introduced you to into it? Um, so I was a really wimpy kid, but my dad was like an adrenaline junkie and he, he discovered it right. He was like, you need to do this and eventually convinced me to do it. I did the bodyboard before I ever did the flow board, but I don't know, eventually I graduated on and just got super addicted to it. Yeah, so how did you like, did you practice at a certain spot or like? Do you have your own place or? Yeah, so I started at a place called uh, the Wind and Aquatic Center. I uh, moved here just like a year ago, so that was closer to my old house. And then a little after that, they opened one up in Provo, which was pretty close to, and that one was open all year long. Provo so Beach I Resort, is that right? A lot. Yeah, Provo Beach. Cool, so how did you get into competing? How did you know that you uh, were good enough to compete? Um, I just heard of like a couple local competitions uh, in Ogden. Mm -hmm. And I went to him, I watched, and I was like, I can do some of the stuff these people are doing. I didn't think I was the best, and I was just comparing myself to like the young kids. I was like 12 or something, so it was just the little guys, and I was like, I think I can do this, and just 
get going on from there. Yeah, so do you have any sponsors that uh, sponsor you in this? or? Yeah, so I've had a few, but my current one's just Mac Blowboards. Very and cool. And they've been really good to me. Cool, so you got that board for free, I suspect? Yeah, this is my new 2016 Pro Model board. Very cool. So what else do you do bef besides flowboarding? You, is that just your uh, only sport that you do, or do you have an other things that you're into? Um, I'm into most sports sports. Uh, Snowboarding, skateboarding, wakeboarding, you name it. I'm into all that. And I'll just, I'll play video games and I'm hurt from this, <laughs> but so, this is my main passion. So what kind of injuries have you gotten from this? Uh, usually not bad, I'm just kind of sore. I wear a knee brace a lot because just over time I've just gotten kind of bad, but the surface is like a trampoline. Yeah. You fall, like you just bounce off of okay. it. So as long as you don't fall too awkwardly, you'll be fine. All right, cool. So um, let's see. What was the most exotic place you went for a, a championship or a tournament? Yeah, definitely Bangkok. Bangkok? That place was crazy, but it was a lot of fun to go. Did you do anything besides flowboarding there, or did you just go there for the competition and come home? I went there for the competition, and I didn't have a ton of time to go sightsee, but I did get a day to just go sightsee after the competition, went and rode some elephants, and went to the floating markets and stuff. Very cool. So, um, let's see. What was the first time you got, do you remember the first time you uh, were on a flowboard? First time I was on a flowboard? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's been so long, I've been doing yeah. this for six years. I, I remember the first time trying it, and I got pulled right over the top and ate it. Yeah. <laughs> Super That's, hard. So, so I've, uh, never, I've never flowboarded, so could, could you tell us like what kind of tricks you can do on here that are doable? That are doable for your average person? Or well, just, just for anybody, yeah. For, for if anybody, they practice enough. If anyone practices enough, they'll be able to get most tricks. You just got to be like super addicted and hard working. Yeah. So it's kind of just like any other board sport. You just have to work at it. Work at it, work at it. Consistent work at it. working at a certain trick, and you just kind of. Yeah. All right, very watch cool. A lot of other people. Very cool. So, what a, uh, let's see. Um, how often do you practice? Do you go down every day or? Um, usually I ride like the days where there's not a ton of people there so yeah. I don't have to like wait in line. So I go like Mondays, Tuesdays, and like Thursdays kind of like before the evening, right before like 5 o'clock-ish. So where did you move from? The, was it big where you were from or? Oh uh, no, I just moved from another part of uh, Utah, okay. Alpine. Alpine. I don't know if you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. I went to Lone Peak High School before this, not for very long, but. Yeah, so what, did you have any friends over there that uh, did this with you, or did you just go with your dad? Or um, I had a couple friends that would do it with me sometimes, but mm -hmm. I was just mostly by myself. Yeah. When it came to that, I met a lot of friends through this that do, did it a lot with me. So you met some people at probably the championships and tournaments? and. Yeah, so I got friends from all over the world, like Abu Dhabi, Bangkok, Florida, exotic and not exotic. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. So that's all the time we have today. Uh, good to meet you, and we will send it to a commercial. I'm Kobe Bryant. Looks like you have some serious potential. I'll learn everything I know from Coach Trigger. I highly recommend you go see him. Oh, what happened? I feel so re-energized. I feel like a completely new man. Oh, I need to go find Coach Trigger. Kobe told me you're looking for me. Are you Coach Trigger? I really need your help. Do you have what it takes? I really think I do, Coach. So, kid, you want to be a legend? Yes. 
Will you do anything I say? Yes. Well, let's get started then. Scratch my head. Again. 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 Last one. Again. All right. Second, aggression. All right. Sumo wrestling. All right, cut it. Rolling. Are you, are you sure about this, Good. Do you want to be the best? Yeah, yeah, coach. Let's get it on. You did good for a rookie. Now get up, let's get back to work. Action. Why am I doing this? Quick feet. Why are we in the front of the bathroom? Stamina. <laughs> oh. hmm. Six minutes? Well, I think that was an amazing show. What about you, Ian? Yeah, I really liked um, Jake Chipman. He was a very uh, uptight guy. He was, he's very uh, open, and uh, is, I found out a lot more about floor riding. I didn't know it was such a big thing. Yeah, I've tried it once or twice, and it is really hard. I fall down every single time. Uh, those cookies that from the cooking segment look really good. I, I, I want to reach over there and grab one really quick. <laughs> yeah, and I am personally very impressed with my uh, smiley face making skills. That takes hours and hours of practice. Um, I think Aspen topped you just a little bit Not, with her tree. <laughs> I, really, man, I, I feel like the smiley face, it just takes so long to do, you know? I feel like it takes, it's a lot more skill than doing all those intricate designs on the cookie. <laughs> well, whatever you say. And um, I really liked uh, the game show how they incorporated food with this, this game and they, they got reward with Cooley Care Cards. Those I wouldn't have poor guys with the habanero peppers. I would, have, I would have been okay if the habanero pepper was like after everything because then you wouldn't have to endure it for like ever. Well, so. no, no, no. They had to endure it for even longer than you Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the painful parts of that because, of course, we have to make them suffer a little bit. I'm glad those guys were uh, good sports about it. and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they came out. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure they had fun on the inside. I don't think so. All right, well, that's it for the show. Uh, I don't know about you, Ethan, but I'm going to go see uh, The Force Awakens. I am right behind you. Have a good day, everybody. And may the force be with you. Baby, don't hold out. Baby, it's cold outside. You're very pushy, you know. I like to think of it as opportunistic.